Hi, y'all. Welcome to Hustle Humbly. It's Alyssa and Katie, and we are two top producing realtors in the Baton Rouge market. We work for two different companies where we should be competitors, but we have chosen community over competition. The goal of our podcast is to encourage you to find your own way in business. So stop comparing yourself and start embracing your strengths. Okay. Hi. It's Love Your People. Love Your Peeps. I'm excited about this episode. Are you? I love one that you're excited about. I feel like it's a good one because we're quarantined and we haven't seen our people. We got to love them. That kind of makes you love them more. Kind of makes you want (laughs) to. Since you think the heart grow fonder. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This will be episode 39. Okay. Um, It'll air at the beginning of May, May 4th, I believe. Um, So I wonder what life will be like then. I don't. I don't know. I know. I don't know. I couldn't even begin to guess, but it might be exactly the way it is right now. It might be. I know. So I'm just excited that we're in May, though. You're right. You've made it out of April. Yeah. For if you've, if you've come this, if you've come this far, I will write. I mm-hmm. mean, we're we're gonna we're getting closer and closer to a year. I mean, August. Yeah, that's August amazing. will be our year. <gasps> Whoa, we need to do something. I know. We'll have to think about that. We, we ought to get like um, people to make suggestions for what they want. For our year anniversary. Yeah. So this episode really has like three titles. We said, love your people, fear yeah. of sphere, which is being scared of your people. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then being afraid of and dealing with rejection. Yeah. So these were all topics that were requested. Yes. Um, except for, well, sort of fear is fear, and I'm not going to name names, but we had talked about a local agent who had basically spoke to you about this in real yeah, life. Yeah, and there's a couple, there's a couple agents that are just, they're scared to reach out to the people that they actually know Yeah, because being rejected by people that you, you know and love can, is way harder than it hurts. strangers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we wanted to, t- it, we felt like these three topics that were all separately requested kind of went together yeah. in a perfectly delightful episode. It's still perfectly delightful. I cannot wait. Do you have a story to start us off? You're going to disappoint me if you don't have a story. Oh, no. I'm just um, kidding. Okay. You well, won't. I will say this, that, you know, we talked about before how, you know, in real estate, people spend money on all different things. Yes. On marketing, marketing themselves, mass marketing, build wrapping. More. Wrapping their car, wrapping their car, bus stop wrapping their house, bus stop, what, <laughs> you name it. And money has been spent in real estate. No doubt. And my thing is, what if, say you spend $500 a month on internet leads. And we yeah. talked about this before. I think maybe even in the last episode. Last uh, week. Yeah. When we recorded, what were we recording that it just came up in? Whatever. Yes. We just, just talked about this. But... If you really just make it your job to look out for ways to help others. So that can be on social media. Like if somebody posts, oh my gosh, both of our kids have the flu. How about you use your your $500 a month budget to waiter them dinner? I mean, wow, talk about an impact. Yeah. And like I had a young buyer guy, single guy who bought his first house with me. And, um, I always had to pass his house because it was near mine and the kid never cut his grass and it started to look like a foreclosure. Stop. And every now and then I would tell the guy who cuts my grass to go cut his grass too. And just, and I would send him a note and be like, keep your grass cut. Just kidding. But like, but like really do it. But really, you know, but it was just, he would be like, oh my. And he would take pictures of it and be like, look, my awesome realtor. But it just goes to show that it's fun. It's yes. fun when you're purposefully seeking yes. ways to help other people. Well, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> I wrote notes on the $500 because we had just talked about this. So okay. this, this all started from me saying there was a year period back in like 2016 when I paid $500 a month for Zillow leads. Mm-hmm. I'm not proud of this. <laughs> um, it was not effective and I do not recommend it. But we were talking about all the things you could do with five hundred dollars in a month, and I'm not saying that everyone has five hundred dollars a month to spend on marketing. But no, you, we're just using the average yeah. of what people who do pay for leads. Right. This is a good average number. Yeah. So let's say you wanted to write a handwritten note and drop in there a five dollars Starbucks gift card, which I do all the time. Sure. Five dollars. That's one hundred <laughs> notes. <laughs> one hundred <laughs> notes. Let's say you wanted to have coffee in person. You're gonna. Go one a day, maybe. 
$10 if you're going to pay for your coffee and theirs and we're going to be fancy. 50 coffees. Like you literally couldn't get them oh all done. Oh my gosh. Like you no. couldn't even get them all done. Okay. What if you decided I'm going to take some of them to lunch? I'm going to have lunch with the past client and we're going to spend 30 bucks. You get to do 16 of those in a month. I mean, like you wouldn't be able to get through that either. Nope. What if you wanted to deliver? Like you've done the um, zip code, the wine mm -hmm. to your client's door. What yep. if you wanted to deliver wine or champagne? Let's just say you got a nice $20 bottle, not a two buck chuck. Like you, let's say you right. really paid some money. Yeah. You could, you could do 25 houses in a month. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. Well, let's say you've got some kids at home or kids in the summer or whatever. Sidewalk chalk, bubbles, water balloons. Let's just say we spent $8 on that. 62 houses you could go to in a month. Mm -mm. And if you go to the people who you love and they love you, and especially the people that refer you, start with those yeah. and just be nice. Just mm -hmm. be nice. Just be like, you know what? I get nothing out of bringing you bubbles other than joy. <laughs> and another thing I do a lot is, you know, we have the cookie bouquet company here. Yeah. And anytime, you know, one of my friends has a baby or something or a past client or a current client, I send them cookies to the hospital with their new baby's name on it. Oh, I love it. I do that. Like they have my information saved on speed dial because they know it's me, oh. one of my friends, one of my clients. I've probably done that 20 times in the last six months. That's amazing. You just see it on Facebook. I mean, it does require you to be on Facebook and keep up with people's lives and yeah. use it as an actual resource for you. But even check the birthdays on Facebook because yeah. I saw um, I saw that it was a girl that I went to college with and we were like besties because we had this class together and mm -hmm. we just were such good friends. And then after college, she doesn't live here, but I saw it was her birthday yeah. and I just texted her a $5 Starbucks gift yes. card. Yes. Someone has like, done that to me. I miss you. And she was like, oh my gosh, I haven't even talked to you <laughs> Like yes, but oh. like people want to reinvent the wheel of real mm -hmm. estate and they yep. want to figure out how to crack the code, the code. And how to get the business yeah. and like, what is the secret sauce? Yes. And there is none. It is people. Yes. That is the only thing. That's the that secret. Get you. That is the only thing. Yeah. And when you simplify it and cut uh -huh. out all the junk in your life that you're doing because you think it's going to help you get business and focus on the necessities, yeah. that is when you will start seeing results. Yeah. And I think when we go back to talking about doing these things to be nice and for joy and to bring joy to other people and not looking for a referral and not right. looking for you to sell their house, there is no reason to be afraid of your sphere. If you're not coming at them with this, um, do you know anyone looking to buy or sell this right. month or next week or next, you know, next quarter? Hi, I'm calling to see if you have anybody you could refer to me. Yeah, I think that is worth being afraid of because you sound ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's not helpful to them. Bring them value. If you're bringing mm -hmm. some kind of value to those people in your sphere, you're never going to even be worried about being afraid of them. Right. Or being afraid of rejection. It doesn't mean you're not going to get rejected. Mm-hmm. But why would you be afraid? All you're doing is being nice. And that kind of goes back to the fear of fear because I can think of five agents off the top of my head that have come to me that said, I just can't reach out to my friends and family. I just can't do it. And I don't know why. And like, um, you know, some of them it's like, well, if I'm at my kid's baseball game, I don't want to be the parent that's always talking about real estate. I'm like, it's not about always talking about yeah. real estate. It's about Talking parents around you, getting to know their kids, getting to know their families. Then they ask you the same questions back. Yeah. And it just builds. And well, then and it needs to be more friends. natural. Yeah. Yes. yes. It just should be a natural conversation. If you don't like people, then you should be worried. But if you just want to talk to people about normal stuff, then eventually it, right. It will build. It will build. They're yeah. going to know what you do because they're, gonna, <gasps> is she here? I'm, I'm listening. Y'all, I want, I want Haven to be on the show so bad, but she won't put she her She may wander on. in here. She may wander <laughs> in here at some point. We can have her sing Let It Go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there wondering if a commercial came on her show and she's like, she was like what is this? I'm this like, is boring. It's a commercial. I, I had them right? growing up. I know you have no idea what this is. They're, they're so spoiled. Oh, my God. Oh, I love man. it. Okay. Yeah. But there's no reason to be afraid if you're just bringing value with no ulterior motive. If you're just 
just getting to know people, to know them, to be nice, mm-hmm. to have friends, to have community. And it kind of goes back to that, um, like in the beginning when I was, I was and there was like that kind of like sleazy guy coach who was like, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. Yeah. Aww. And I'm like, oh man, I should, I need to get out of my comfort zone. But if you're not comfortable with what you're doing, you make other people uncomfortable. Yeah. And Cause you'll just, you'll feel awkward and it'll, it'll just, oh, can you imagine what I would look like knocking on a door? No, no, it's, it would be ridiculous. It would be yeah. ridiculous. But it just goes to show, like, if you're comfortable and you believe in your brain and you know that you are just doing this because you genuinely care about knowing the parents of your kids' friends or your friends or people in this group you've joined and you're just seeking, like, getting to know people, then you don't have that self-conscious feeling Mm -hmm. when you're approaching people. Yeah, and I think providing value does not also have to be something that costs you money. Mm -mm. I mean, just time, that's valuable. But... It can be as simple as commenting and liking on a social media post. It could be Mm -hmm. like just being nice in another way, sending a letter. I mean, calling, phone, text. What if you, instead of sending the Facebook message, happy birthday, send a text message? Right. Like be the Mm -hmm. one who's not, like be the one who took the extra step or send an email or, or, or phone call. Oh my God. If you like to talk to people, phone calls are powerful. Yeah. Like they're seriously powerful. Just be like, Hey, how's it going? How did you survive quarantine? Did it go okay for you? Are you glad that things are getting back to normal? Whatever, whatever, Mm -hmm. like just anything. Um, I just don't think it has to be value real estate related, but if it is occasionally, I think that's good too. Do you want to send a market report? Fine. But let that be the fifth contact or I mean, it doesn't have to be Clearly, I'm sending you real estate information every time I contact you. Well, if they haven't heard from you in five years and your first contact is, hey, can I set you up on a report for your, it's like, no, I don't want to be, be but if they've been hearing from you and they have rapport with you, when you're a good person and that you're not out to get them. And then you say, Hey, we just got this new report at my office. Do you mind if I send it to you and you could help me, you know, see if it looks right. You know, your subdivision better than anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, Tell me what you think. Yeah. And just taking that approach is just always better. Always better. It takes time. And I think that we get worried about pushing things when we don't need mm-hmm. to. Just mm-hmm. just keep doing it. Uh, um, also, I wrote down that for the free things you can do to love people, go love your local business, not because of this time, but all the time. Go to their post and make a comment. Just say, mm-hmm. hey, I love that burger at the restaurant. We have it every time we come. Or I mm-hmm. love your your paintings are so amazing. I'm loving this series. I don't care. Whatever it is, um, I think that picture how you feel when someone makes a nice comment on your post. And, mm-hmm. and there is a real human behind every business page and every person's page. But like, especially business pages, they are so excited that you tagged them or that you made a comment or that you shared their post. And it's not serving you in any way other than you like that business and you want to make their life better. And guess what? Maybe one day they need your help or maybe your friend who follows you on social media is like, I love that restaurant too. I want you to be my realtor. You know what I mean? Like just just be nice. Just, yeah. just be nice. Just to do yeah, it. It's the, it's the secret sauce. It's the secret. Well, and if people so like easy. you and they yeah. know you and they trust you, then they, when they, ever they hear of a need, they'll just naturally call you. Yeah. And if they don't, it's okay. Like, let's talk about rejection because that was part of it. Yeah. Well, what happens? How do you get over it? Do you have any tips? Um, I take rejection hard even to this day. Yeah. But I am at the point where I'm like, but look at all the people that used me. Yeah. And I try to think on the success stories I've had, the people that used me. And then I think back, you know, now that I've been in it enough years to, to have some history, like I remember people that didn't use me in the first beginning years that called me to use me now the next time yeah and I'm like you know Alyssa they didn't use you this time it's nothing personal but maybe they'll call you next time yeah you know I'm still gonna be here I'm not going anywhere oh I've had those people send a referral I mean they didn't use me but they thought enough of me to send someone else and it's okay like we talked about in oh it was community over competition I think or like where our business comes from. We, it, I don't want to, I don't have to sell all the houses. Like right. I don't need to do them all. So 
if one of them passes me by, maybe it was just meant to be. Maybe they would have been a difficult client. Maybe, you know, they weren't. Sometimes people don't want to use their friends and family because they're uncomfortable with those people knowing their financial information. Sure. Or, like, it's just not, they would rather get a business person completely outside of their sphere. And that's okay, too. Mm -hmm. Now, I do have probably some close friends and family that know I would, like, kill them. Oh yeah. For like sure. I would kill them. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think there is a limit, but you know, people have their reasons. Don't take it. I think maybe the key to getting over rejection is trying not to take it personally. I mm -hmm. will give you an example of this. I love my OBGYN. I love her. I think she's amazing. She's a delight. I feel like we had a really good like rapport, great relationship. Yeah. She knew what I did. she had even made a comment on a couple of occasions. I want you to help us buy our next house. And I'm like, that is great. Yeah. I love it. I'm so glad. She would always be like, you're doing so great. I see your pet. Like we were friends on Facebook. It was wonderful. And then she bought a house. Oh, no. She did not use a me. Who did she use? Do and you I know? Was like, yes, I do. And I was like. Did it make oh. sense? Yeah. It Basically, her original agent was a very sweet, delightful. I don't even know if she's still in the business older lady who had been selling her family houses for years. Mm. Every, her dad, her uncle, yeah. her, everyone in the whole family had used the same agent and she had used her once before. And it was just like, she was going to get ostracized from her family. If she didn't use the family agent, like this is the agent we all use. You gotta, you gotta use her. And so she did. And I'm like, I can't fault you for, I mean, it's not like, what am I going to do? It's funny that you bring that up though, because the times that I have almost been more hurt is when they bring out to me first and I'm like working, helping them, helping them. And then it's like, they, they go buy something either with no agent or with some, and I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. But I didn't even ask you. Like right. you asked me right, and, and then now, you rejected me. And now you're hurting my feelings. Now you're hurting my feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's just, you know, it never gets easier. I got, nope. um, you know, I have a guy that I went to school with like my whole life and he moved away after college and we were just good friends. Um, but he was moving back to Baton Rouge and was like, I want to use you. And I have been talking with him since like December. Yep. Cause he had to sell his house in New York. Uh, anyway. So, I show him houses, this and that. And then he just found out someone he knew selling a house and he bought it. And I was just kind of bummed because I, I did spend so much time. I know. And um, I was excited again because he was someone that I would have loved to work with and it would have been fun. And, you know, I was sad and I was disappointed and I wanted to be a part of the process, but things happen. And it just goes to show it doesn't matter how long you've been in the business, things happen. Yeah, no kidding. Right. It no it's kidding. not something you grow out of. I think it no. gets I think it happens less as you get the training and confidence to educate your yeah. clients. Well, I think it always how hurts. It works. Yeah, and I think right, you can avoid it, but I think it always hurts. It always. just um it always hurts, but the busier you are, the the easier you can let it roll off your back cuz you're like it's okay. I don't if I miss out on one transaction, I'm going to be okay. But in the beginning, it hurts more because you're not used to it and because every transaction is important, right? Like, sure. Yeah. You just, it hurts numbers wise. Uh, yeah. I need what? to pause this. Okay, pause. I'll be right back. Hello, friends. Hi, all. Our template course has launched. It's out there. And we have been getting some really positive feedback. Yes, I have some great feedback I wanted to share with you guys. Um, we had one purchaser say, thank you for these templates. As a new agent, I feel it would have taken me years to create these on my own. That's awesome. I know, it's so great. And then I had, these are so incredibly helpful. What a great investment. Thank you for your time and efforts putting these together. I think that you guys... This is the answer to it saving yourself answer. some time. It, it helps you put systems in place. It yep. keeps you professional. It keeps you consistent. It just makes everything run so much smoother. So much smoother. You're never mm -hmm. going to forget to tell somebody something. No, because this it's covers, all there. It's all there. And you're going to edit it to make it sound like your voice if you'd like. And it's going to be perfect for your business. Yeah. So go check out our template course. Yes. At hustlehumblypodcast.com. Perfect. Okay. Enjoy. Enjoy. Bye. Sometimes it's good to pause. What do I mean? Um, Tanner's home. I knew oh. she was talking to someone. So. <laughs>
was like, thank God it's someone we know. Um, so now I can just like fully not even be worried about it because someone's watching her. So. Invested. Perfect. I feel like I just left Matilda to like make her own pancakes or something. Like, <laughs> I had a little bit of guilt about being in here, but That's now that Tanner's home, I'm good. So amazing. Okay. Mine is, it's, everything's fine. It, we'll just edit it. It's okay. Um, okay. So back on the loving of the people. Mm -hmm. We were talking about rejection. I don't want to stay on that too long though. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, you know, it is – someone wanted us to dedicate a whole episode to it. <laughs> right. I can't. That's too depressing. I mean, yeah. honestly, when I look back on them, I know there have been – I mean, there's always the for sale by owners you lose. But that that per, that one particular story was the one where I felt like I really tried and I failed. And But it was okay. I mean, look, I'm all right. What? I do think too, it's important when the rejection does happen, we can't always bl like get angry at the person. I think yeah. that's when you have to say, did I send my template to them explaining the rules of the buyer? Yep. Did I have those conversations with them about what to do if they decide to go to open houses or, yeah, I mean, that's how my templates developed is by yeah. rejection or things going wrong and me saying, but how much of this is my fault? How yep. much of this could have been avoided if I was the professional yep. and I did my job? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So it just goes to show that it's a two way street and you need to, yeah. you know, have your moment, but also take a minute to reflect and ask how it could have been prevented. Yeah. And I also think there's an opportunity at the end of the rejection or when the rejection happens for you to reach out and say, could I have done something different? I wish you all the best. I hope you enjoy, enjoy your home. Please let me know if you need anything. Just be the bigger person and don't take it I personally. I feel like you're good at that. In, like I'm not good at in the moment. Yeah, I know because it hurts. Right. But if you do it, you're setting yourself up for success in the future. Mm -hmm. Whether it is that you could just take something away from it that you learn or is it that those people are going to remember how you received that and, yeah. and when it's time to sell again or send a referral, they're like, well, you know what? I didn't love the way my agent performed, but Katie sure handled it well when I rejected her. Sure. <laughs> or or yeah. she still, you know, sent me valuable information. I don't know. Like I'm not trying to cross the line and steal anyone's client, but I think you can still be kind when they tell you no. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think how you react when it happens will be determine if they you ever stand a chance in the future yeah I agree I agree mm -hmm. why else do you think people are afraid of their sphere I think I can speak a little bit to this in that you know I sometimes worry about what people think and when I was new and young um, a lot of the adults in my life that I told thought it was a joke that, you know, that's, that's cute Yeah, that you're doing that. And, oh, real estate, everybody's in real estate. Yeah. I think that's kind of what it is too, for what it was for me is that I felt like I was scared to be like, and even to this day, sometimes when people say like someone I've never met, what do you do? I'm a realtor. I feel like they <sighs> don't take me seriously with what that means. Yeah. Like, I feel like I need to be like, but I'm like a real realtor. Like I sell houses yeah. and, and I actually operate like a business. Like I feel like I need to justify <laughs> right. myself. You know why part of that is though? It's because everyone knows 10 realtors and probably five to eight of them are part time. So it's not that every single realtor runs a full time business there. Some of them are hobbyist. I mean, some of them are just dabbling. Some of them, it's like a side hustle, which is fine. It's fine. You're allowed to, it's, I have my own opinions, but it's, that's why the people in your sphere are, are like, Oh, or, or why you have that, that pushback in your heart. Like you're like, Oh, it's not. Yeah. Like I want to be proud of the realtor brand. And you know, that's yes. one reason that I wanted to start the podcast is to just encourage people to be professional, treat it like a business, set boundaries, have a real yeah. life. Don't yeah. let the business run you to the ground, you know, get, earn some respect here. Like yeah. we could be on the same level as attorneys and CPAs yeah. and we should be. Yes. It's but important. It's the way that people allow the public to operate. Yeah. Um, if you don't give yourself the respect, 
they're not going to give you the respect. And that's where in the beginning, when I was gaining my confidence, I was scared to work directly with friends and family because I didn't want to be, I didn't want like pity business and I didn't want to be judged. And right. If you fail at something with a stranger, you can just never talk to them again. Right. If, if you do a bad job or look like you don't know what you're doing with a family member or a friend or someone in your sphere, you're going to have to like, just know they know, like mm-hmm. I'm learning. But I think that's where humility really comes in. There's no reason why you can't say to your friend, hey, I'm new at this. I am going to give it my all. I am going to seek out any resource we need, but I might make mistakes. For instance, today I did my very first virtual showing. I had to get on that video call and walk through the house with a buyer I have never met on the other end. Okay. And I told her in an email before when we were setting up the time, I'm like, I will be there at this time. This is my very first virtual showing. So you're going to have to be patient with me. Um, I'm going to do my best. And she responded with, LOL, it's my first too. She's like, it's fine. And then when we finished the showing today, she said, I didn't prompt her. She said, you did great. She said, that was perfect. You did Aww. great. But there's no reason why you need to hide that you're new at something. There's no, no reason why you need to pretend that you've been selling real estate for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Tell them it's your third transaction and that you're going to do everything you can to make it go smoothly and that you learned all these important things and that you have all the time for them that a person who's been in it 10 years doesn't have for them. Like, I just Mm -hmm. think that you trying to fake it till you make it is, is hard. It is hard. Pointless. And I certainly started off that way. I wore the blazers and the suits and I did everything I could to look older and sound better. Um, and then I was not winning. I was not winning listings and I was interviewing for them. Yeah. And finally I said, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to be honest and say I'm, I'm new. And I, I come from a great company that supports me. And even though I don't have the numbers yet, the company does. And this is what we're going to do for you. And I'm going to give it my all. And they can just, they, they all of a sudden admire you for your honesty, for your vulnerability. There is the sense of like people want to help people. Yes. Um, And then realizing the truth is, Hey, she is hungrier than the others that we saw and she's being honest about it. Yeah. I think that's okay. If we can get out of our scarcity mindset, you're not going to be afraid to be honest. Mm -hmm. Just it's okay. Maybe they don't all work out and we just learn to deal with rejection. And maybe you have some sort of one hour, pity party after you're rejected and then you move on. Right. You know, what's the best thing to probably do after you've been rejected? Go Mm -hmm. love on five people. Yeah. Like go do something nice for someone else in your sphere that isn't, hasn't rejected you. (laughs) Exactly. And that will solidify them not rejecting you later. Right. I think that's good. How else do you like to love on your people? I mean, you know, we've done the episodes on database. Mm-hmm. And we've done an episode on a holiday database. So I think mm-hmm. we've talked about like some practical stuff about how to reach out and love on your people. Is there mm-hmm. something else that you want to say about that? Well, you were telling me about your client that is on a billboard right now. Oh my God, yes. I forgot. I'm so glad. You, I'm so glad I reminded you about that. Okay. So y'all recently, twice I've seen it. I've been driving down the street in the last couple of weeks and there is a billboard of one of my very sweet past clients. She got principal of the year. And so it's her picture and her name and it says principal of the year. And I'm like, I'm so proud. Like my heart is just beaming. So I shot her text and I said, I saw your billboard and I'm so proud of you. And she was like, thanks so much. And I mean, like, that's it y'all. Yeah, it cost me zero dollars. But what I could have done is seen the billboard and said, oh, that's my client. How cute. And just moved on with my life. Right. She mm-hmm. would have never known, known I saw the billboard. Like bring that joy to the people. Yeah. And I think I mentioned that before too, about how like we just had our awards go in the newspaper and I have been getting, I got flowers. Yeah. I have been getting text messages. I have been getting emails. Some people I didn't even have their number saved. It's so it's funny. For like saw your in the paper, congrats. And I'm like, I don't even know who this is. But it's just a reminder to say, am I doing this for other people? Like when things happen, am I 
celebrating others. And yeah. Like, what makes you feel special? Right. That is exactly what I'm saying. And that's the same thing with posting on social media. Don't you feel warm and fuzzy when someone comments and says, your dog is so cute. I (laughs) love the art you just painted. I love the paint color in your bedroom. Like if you're proud of something enough to post it and then someone makes a comment about it, holy Mm -hmm. smokes. I mean, all of a sudden you're like, I just knew I loved them. Right. And and if you can get to the point where you're comfortable with it, it's the easiest, oh best, funnest business. So that fun you could have. It's so I mean, fun. it's so fun. Yeah, it's. I mean, like it really is. I think that uh, yes. And I have notes. I want to make sure I say. Remember when we're being afraid of our sphere. Your sphere is the people who you should be least afraid of because when they send you referrals, it's literally safer than yes strangers. Like it's Mm -hmm. literally safer. You do not need to be afraid of them. It is, they're going to be more loyal. You've already been vetted. If your spear sends you someone and they're like, oh, you know, whatever, Karen referred me to you and you're, Karen's not looking for another realtor. She's done. She called you. You're good to go. Like this is the best. It's going to be the most amazing business you could have. Absolutely. And she's not going to chop you up and throw you in the woods. (laughs) Hopefully. <laughs> it's actually safer. Safer, y'all. It's actually safer. No I was trying to, to find this quote. Please do. So much because I don't I want to mess quote. it up. Okay, well, please find the quote. In the meantime, I'll talk about other ways to spend $500. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I had lots of notes and we went through all of them. $500, this is just a random number, but let's just say you look at all your advertising expenses and you're like, you know what? I don't need to whatever pay for park bench anymore. I'm going to use that money. Um, you can also place some Facebook ads if you want. You You Mm -hmm. could, um, I don't know. I just think mail people like some mail. They do. They like mail. You could text the Starbucks gift card if you want to do it that way. If you're not feeling like you want to send mail, I didn't, I wanted to say lazy, but if you don't have time to write a note and put a card in there, send it in a text. Okay. You got your quote. I do. Tell it to me. This is this has been my quote for my business, like my whole career. Oh yeah, I think I've even shared it before. But you can close more business in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. Yep, we we've said it so many times, but this business is very vain, where it is all about me, me, me. Look at my face look at what I'm doing, look at my success, know who I am. But the question is, what about them? Yeah. How do they know that you're thinking of them? Yeah. I think that's good. You know, that's funny. I have never put my face on a sign because I feel that way. I'm like, I don't, you don't need, my face doesn't sell your house. Like you don't, Right. And you don't need this mug on your sign so that your house will sell. I, it's just the point, like just what you're saying. It's yeah. such, it's a business where that's what's normal. And so yes. we just get sucked into it and then you just do the way everybody else does it. Y'all don't be afraid to do it different. Yeah. Do whatever works for do you. Whatever makes, what makes you feel you comfortable. Good. That's right. Whatever makes you comfortable and whatever makes you feel good. Well, if you focus on what you're authentic to, that's the other thing too, is you can't pretend yeah. you're something you're not. No. But no. when you when you do it your way, yep. it attracts the people that are like minded yes. and that you would work the best with. Like right. if you're not, you know, if you're not a hipster, don't pretend to be a hipster. That yeah. attracts hipsters that you don't know how to relate to and work well with. Like yeah. just be true to who you are like and I, then mm-hmm. you'll get the business that you need. Well, I'm wearing jeans and flip flops. I'm not comfortable wearing heels. It's not ever going to happen. Like I'm just not going to show up to the showing in a skirt and heels. Right. And I think that that's fine. Like, and it's, it's funny fine. because there are times where I feel like I can be either one. Yeah. 80% of the time I am like jeans, flats, but then there's like this 20% where I like where I like to put on heels and I like to go to luncheons and I like to That's go to cute. board of directors meetings yeah. and I like to go to my charity events and it's just funny because I have a little bit of both. Yeah, that's but okay. it's also important to know like when each one is appropriate. No doubt. Um, no doubt. Just to, you know, be sure you're staying in the right lane and keeping everything 
you know, respectable and appropriate, but yeah, your vibe will attract your tribe. So yes, whoever you choose to love on, pick the people you like, pick Mm -hmm. the people you actually want to spend time with. Imagine, Mm -hmm. imagine this world. Imagine you were in a business where you had so much business, you had to turn some away. Who would you pick? Like, who would you Mm -hmm. keep? If you look at Mm -hmm. it that way and you're like, I'm making a choice. I'm choosing this business. So these are the people I want to work with. I think that would change how you viewed it too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yup. I like this to love a the good people. one. It's so yeah. good. Cause it's so fun. Well, it's basically me and your business model. Yeah. It's how we operate. We don't do a lot of fancy things, but we do our best to just let the people in our life know that we're here. We're working. Yeah. We care about them. If they need anything, call us, refer us. Without having to, you know, be a walking billboard. Yeah. When people it's ask me for hard. something, like if I have a past client or someone in my sphere who asks me for random information that I know has nothing to do with them buying or selling today or tomorrow or in six months, I always do it. Yeah. Like, be available to the people that you want to help, like the people that you love. Be available sure. to them. Mm-hmm. I cannot tell you how many houses I've had to look up. Not even houses. My dad loves to know the price of a piece of land. Okay. And he will always call or text me and be like, hey, I saw this uh, sign on blah, blah, blah. Tell me how much it is. And every time, I'm not kidding you. Every time I say, okay, let me go look it up. Do, 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 do. I look it up. I tell him what it is. And every time he says, that's too much. <laughs> every time. <laughs> that's that's what he, he just wants to know. He just wants to know. And you know what? I just keep giving him that info. <laughs> I should just make up numbers because he's going to say that's too much no matter what. Yeah. Just, funny. I think it's fun. It's, and look, this is something you can practice. You, you may not be natural at reaching out to people. You may just forget to, you may get busy. Maybe, you, you know, especially in this season where if your kids are at home or you feel like you have a lot going on or you're mentally, you know, feeling beat down, um, you can practice this. You can right. force yourself to make five comments on Facebook or send five letters or just start small. And I've shared my birthday strategy with y'all. Like whoever's birthday it is on Facebook, ask yourself, do I know these seven people whose birthday it is today? If I don't know them at all, maybe I shouldn't be friends with them. Maybe you should unfriend them. Yeah. If I do know them, I should wish them happy birthday. Yeah. Are any of them worthy of a $5 Starbucks gift card? Is this person in my database? Yeah. I mean, if, and if you do it every day at the end of the year, you've cleaned out your whole Facebook. Yep. I and love it just that. gives it to you in chunks each day. Yeah. And not only that, you've brightened up one of their days if you're sending the card and if you yeah. send them the message. And maybe instead fun. of writing on their wall, shoot them a text message or I something. Know. Something I that, that it doesn't get lost. You know, I know when it was my birthday, it was like, you know, however many people wrote on your wall, I couldn't read them all. No. Oh my God. You know what I did this year on my birthday though? What? Every single person that wrote happy birthday, I committed to writing a comment. Oh my like, god! I like I went to, uh, and it took all day. Forever. It took yeah. so long. But I was like, you know what? They took time to write on my wall. I'm going to take time to make a comment and say Woo. thank you. And try. Most of them just said thank you. But sometimes I would try to write something that meant I used it as an opportunity to make re like contact with them. Yeah, but it was hard. That was hard work. But I just feel like social media is just a t- time sucker. You can use it to yes. make notes. You know, if someone's parent passed away, put that in your calendar and remember every year, hey, just thinking about you this time of year that that's going on. It's just all about genuinely caring about the people in your life and and letting them know that you're here. Being a good friend. Yeah. And what, I mean, how awesome is it that that's our job? Yeah. It is our job to be good friends and parents and everything. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's good. I'm so happy that we talked about this. Me too. Okay, a, I'm going to do our toast. Okay, good. My, I don't want my laptop to die. Please do it now. I'm ready. Summer Rathman. Oh, yes. Would like to toast Katie Caldwell. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> she wanted it to be a surprise. Oh, my God. Stop. Okay. She would like to congratulate Katie on her move to Southerly and this new fresh season in her career. She will miss Katie dearly. Oh, that's so kind. But she loves her so much, and she would like to congratulate Brandy Veazey for landing such a wonderful agent oh, in her office. wow. Look, I'm getting teary. That was kind. Oh, oh that my was God. kind. Thank she you. She sent it to my personal email so that she you could be surprised. She wanted to make 
stop. That's so good. Okay. Well, thank you. Cheers to me, I guess. Cheers to Katie and Brandy. And and cheers to Summer. That's amazing. Oh my God. (laughs) So nice. That is ridiculous. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Well, love your people. See y'all next time. Love you, friend. Love you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hustle Humbly podcast. Let us know who we should toast to for the next episode. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hustle Humbly Podcast. If you have an episode, topic, or question, please email us at hustlehumblypodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. See you next week. Bye. This is the good life.